Welcome to the mitosis video. This is my favorite topic in all of cell biology. Remember, there are two major phases of the cell cycle, interphase and mitosis. Today, we're just talking about mitosis. I modified this video so that at anaphase, this video would speed up just a little bit because that is more accurate. In anaphase, it goes really, really fast. I'm not gonna describe the phases just yet. I just want you to see how it is in action and then at the very end, I'll describe it again. I love this video because you can actually see not just the cartoon going into mitosis, but you can even see a real cell going into mitosis because real cells round up in mitosis. Before we start talking about mitosis, I want to clarify some of the nomenclature that exists in DNA and it can often get really confusing because DNA is described differently at various points of the cell cycle. So let's talk about that. DNA is a double helix. It's a macromolecule that belongs to the group of macromolecules called nucleic acids. So if scientists wanted to characterize how many chromosomes existed in each species, they could do so by something called a karyotype. This is an example of a human karyotype. So if you count the chromosomes in this karyotype, you'll find that we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. That's also 46 chromosomes in total. So that means you inherited 23 from mom and 23 from dad. Since there are 23 pairs of chromosomes, that means you inherited one chromosome, one from mom, and one chromosome, one from dad. Scientists often wait till cells are in mitosis so that they can start counting the chromosomes in each species. So if they were really curious to find how many chromosomes existed in, say, a frog, then they would take frog embryos and look under a microscope, and once those eggs were in mitosis, they could count individual chromosomes. Chromosomes are often characterized so that the larger chromosome ends up being chromosome one, and then the smallest chromosomes ends up being at the very end of the count. The term chromosome simply means one long chain of DNA in a well-defined, tightly coiled structure. Think about it that way. So let's zoom in in the nucleus. And what we find is chromatin. So what is chromatin again? Chromatin is DNA with histones, but it's not tightly coiled. I'm having a chromatin kind of hair day. When DNA, is ready to duplicate and undergo mitosis, it has to tightly coil even more than this right here. And so when it does that, it becomes what's called a chromosome. Decondensed are here, condensed are when they're really tightly coiled. When cells are entering S phase, they have to duplicate their DNA. We have to have DNA duplication in order for mitosis to take place. So how does that look like? If we take chromosome one from this karyotype here, and the same chromosome one that you got from mom, okay, imagine that that's this right here, and we duplicated that chromosome. So we get something like this, okay? Now we have two chromosomes that are identical with each other. So whenever you see this structure here, that means the chromosomes must have just gotten out of S phase and they're ready to go into mitosis. And this is how an electron microscope of human DNA looks like. We have duplicated DNA from chromosome one, that came from mom, and then duplicated DNA, the other copy from mom and one from dad. We have to duplicate this so that we can pull them apart during anaphase. And yet there's another evil word that sounds the same as everything else. Chromatid. No, I didn't say chromatin, I said chromatid. So what is a chromatid anyway? So whenever we use the term chromatid, what we really are trying to refer to are sister chromatids. Does anything look like a sister on this picture? Well, if you are a twin, an identical twin, you would say, it's this guy right here. So it turns out that whenever chromosomes duplicate and they're bound by a centromere, this is not called a chromosome anymore, it's called a chromatid. Why? These are sister chromatids now because there's two of them, one and two. Whenever we refer to chromatids, they're always together. We usually don't just say chromatid. We just usually say chromatids. When we want to say that the sister chromatids separate, psh, when do you think that happens? Anaphase. So, what do you have to know? You have to know chromatid. You have to know chromosome, and you have to know chromatid. Man. What's chromatin? Decondensed DNA that has histones wrapped around it. What's chromosomes again? Condensed DNA that's tightly coiled around proteins called histones. 
so tightly coiled that we begin to see its own distinct structure. It's so condensed, it's visible under the microscope. Oh, it's beautiful. What the heck is chromatid? It's when you duplicate the actual chromosome and now they're bound by the centromere. You only use the term chromatid when the chromosomes have duplicated. That means you can only use that term chromatid after S phase and when it's going into mitosis. This is a cartoon of a cell. It has one chromosome from mom and one chromosome from dad. Now we have to first duplicate these chromosomes. That means these guys have sister chromatids. These sister chromatids will line in the middle of the cell. This is a perfect situation we've created because now we can split these chromosomes apart and we get two identical daughter cells. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. Now let's go over mitosis. So in prophase, the nuclear envelope breaks down. At metaphase, these chromosomes will align in the middle of the cell thanks to microtubules. At anaphase, the sister chromatids pull apart. And then at telophase, we see the nuclear envelope reforming. In cytokinesis, we see division of the cytoplasm. The term mitosis actually means division of the nucleus, and the term cytokinesis means division of the cytoplasm. Often cytokinesis is lumped into the phase of mitosis. A lot of scientists like to consider it as a separate phase. For our case, we're just going to consider cytokinesis a part of mitosis. Let's check out a kidney cell that has condensed chromosomes that are now lined up at the center of the cell. Microtubules are doing this. And once they are lined up at the center of the cell, they will pull the sister chromatids apart so that they go to the opposite sides of the cell and we begin to see the nuclear envelope reforming and the chromosomes decondensing into chromatin. Major points of mitosis. Know the subdivisions of mitosis. What happens at prophase? Nuclear envelope breaks down. Microtubules are beginning to attach to the chromosomes. What happens at metaphase? Chromosomes align at the middle. That's easy. What happens at anaphase? Well, sister chromatids say bye-bye. <laughs> sister chromatids pull apart. What happens at telophase? Nuclear envelope reforms, and at cytokinesis, we see complete division of the cytoplasm. So know the difference between chromosomes versus chromatid versus chromatid. Understand that chromosomes must duplicate before mitosis can start. Well, that wraps up mitosis. I hope that was helpful, and keep dividing.